All right, guys. Today we're going to talk about what it actually means to practice for a bass tournament. You know, I'm rigging up all these rods behind me. Rigging up, I've got a list on my phone of like 25 different things that I need on Lake Okeechobee. A lake where I'm going to do two things and I'm rigging up 25 rods. So, it just seems a bit excessive and it kind of had us thinking about today what exactly we try to do whenever we go to these lakes and try to practice. And it varies from lake to lake. You know, like <clears throat> Okeechobee is a lot of shallow cover, lots of vegetation. You got reeds, you got four or five different types of reeds. You got four or five tips, types of vegetation that are growing out in the middle of the lake that are, you know, just grow to the surface, pond weed, hydrilla. I think I saw some millful. I don't know, there's just lots of stuff down there. But, you know, the biggest thing that you're trying to do in practice really is get confidence in a way to get a bite, a way where you think you have the potential to catch a big one, and an area of the lake to do it in. So I'm bringing up all these rides behind me. I've got tons of stuff to go down there and ride around and try to find a place where I think they're gonna bite. You know, it's not really about what baits you throw. You know, I'm sponsored by a certain group of companies. Other people are sponsored by completely different groups of companies and everybody catches them. You know, everybody catches them. The baits are not that important. They're just not. Finding the location is it. So the way that I practice, on some of my best tournaments I've ever had, I don't do a lot of fishing. You know, I don't do much fishing at all. Even whenever I'm going to fish shallow, it's a lot of riding around trying to find places where, hey, I think they'll be here if this happens. You know, if the wind blows this direction, I know this is good. You know, I know where the grass is. I know where the shallow docks are. I know where the bridge is. I know where everything's at in this certain area. Then I run it down the lake and I try to find more and more and more and figure out how to run around a lot. That's how some of my best practices go. So the most efficient way, in my opinion, to practice is whenever I go to a lake, first day of practice, I try to figure out how to get a bite or two. You know, like I'll fish more the first day of practice. I'll flip around, cast around, skip docks, fish deep, fish some brush piles, whatever it is, I'll try to fish quite a bit the first day of practice. And then the second day of practice, if I'm gonna try to do something risky, something off the wall, go way back in a place or make a long run somewhere, I'll fish around in there. After I get in there, I want to make sure the potential's there for me to justify making that type of a run. If I don't catch them, that's fine. But I'll fish a lot. The more high risk it is, the harder it is to get into a place. I just want to make sure that that potential is good for me to want to go there. Going into the third day of practice, I do almost no fishing on the third day of practice. Definitely don't have any hooks on, and I'll flip a little bit, I'll you know, do whatever, but for the most part, it's going to be a lot of riding around on the third day of practice. So we have three days of practice kind of refining the areas I want to be in. You know, if I find something off the wall, I'll make a cast or two on it. If I want to try something unique that I thought about over the night or whatever, I'll make a couple casts on that and try to get a bite or two. But for the most part, third day of practice is always riding around, looking at the lake, trying to figure out exactly what I want to do, make sure that I know how to run exactly where I'm trying to get, all that type of stuff. So that's the way that I feel about practice. It's about riding around, working hard to find an area where there are a lot of bass and then after that it's my job in the tournament to go back in there and catch them i don't want to get so dialed in in practice that hey if i throw this exact color worm you know up beside this exact piece of cover i'm going to get a bite because at the drop of a hat the conditions can change and that bite can go away so it's my job to find where a big population of bass are living, and then tournament day, I'll go in there with five or six different baits and figure out which one they're biting on that day, or you know that hour, or that minute, or that while the wind's blowing, or whatever it is. It's my job to make them bite that day. So the most efficient way for me to practice is to get an understanding of kind of what the fish are doing on day one, and then for two more days, ride around and try to find more areas where that can happen. And then I usually try to start the tournament in what I deem to be the best area of the lake, even if I didn't make a cast there in practice. Lots of times in tournaments, I'll start somewhere where I never even made a cast just because I feel like it's set up right, it looked right, everything felt good, felt like I would have caught them there. So I'll start there. You know, so that's kind of the way that I approach practicing. What about, what about the people that I've, we've talked to other elites and when they practice, they'll like go into one creek and they will fish the entire bank. Lock it down. Yeah. Yep. Like they will like nip They'll it. They'll like commit to an area. straight back and they'll go through the same bank. Yep. Some people do that. Some people will, you know, like historically, if you were fishing Lake Fork, you know, there's a there's an area, there's one creek on that lake where 
it always goes down in there. There's always checks going to come out of there. There's always going to be 10 or 15 checks come out of there out of the 50. So some people will go to that lake and spend all three days of practice in that one creek and try to figure out everything in there. You know, if there's a brush pile, if there's a rock pile, if there's a shell bar, if there's a timber line, whatever it is, wherever the fish can be, they can lock it down. I don't do that personally. I like to stretch my legs a little bit. I like to run around a little bit. I like to move and have a lot of different things going at the same time because I feel like it's more consistent that way. I put a lot of my eggs in one basket this year in tournaments and ended up in the middle of tournaments not catching them because I had such good practices a couple times where I thought, hey, I got the potential to win this one. And it makes me want to commit and try to lock it in and just grind it out because I know whenever it happens, it's going to happen. But um, some people do that. I've never done that. It is a really good approach, you know, as far as getting out of a tournament with getting a check or 30th finish or 40th finish or whatever you're trying to do. You can get out of there by staying in one place. Even if it's not the absolute best place on the lake that week, you can lock in there and make sure you stay in there and you're going to catch some fish. And that's not a bad approach at all. I wish I'd have done that a couple times this year to the places that I knew. But I didn't do that and I did a little more high risk approach. But that is a really good way to do it, really good point the hunter had. You can lock it in in one area where you think it's going to go down and really learn all the nuances of that area and be very, very consistent a lot of times. But I like to go into practice with four or five confidence baits. Depending on the time of the year, you know, it's gonna be like a vibrating jig, a frog, a flipping bait, a jig, you know, whatever, whatever, a swim jig, something to flip, something to wind, a shallow crankbait, a square bill, you know, like a DT6, anything like that. Depending on which lake we're going to, I'm gonna go into it with five, six, sometimes seven, eight, nine, ten confidence baits in the boat on the deck. And just baits that I know fish will bite time and time again, that's what I'm gonna use in practice. You know, like when we go to certain lakes, we go to Florida. There's certain little deals that only work down there in Florida or primarily work down there in Florida. I remember when I went to James River, there was a certain type of worm that everybody throws on James River. But I didn't have a lot of confidence in it because I never caught them on it. But it's supposed to be the deal there, you know. So I used it some, but ended up falling back to the four or five baits that I know that I have a lot of confidence in. So for me, a lot of times I don't want to give in to what's working locally on these lakes or what exactly everybody else is doing on these lakes. I'll really use my 10 confidence baits that I have and go all around the country and find them that way. So for me, get you some confidence baits, cover a lot of water, find you a place that feels good. Don't just drop the trolling motor and go through the motion and say, I need to look here. Well, if you don't feel it, don't look there. Move around, go find some good water. So any more so, input, Hunter? Yeah, so if you're like 11 o'clock on day one of the tournament and you realize that obviously what you did in practice was not it because you're not catching them, yep. are you going to I'm gonna run new water first. So, what's your mentality like? How do you feel whenever it's like 11 o'clock? So, you just start trying to go through the mo you know, go through everything you've done in your head and figure out what kind of adjustments you need to make next. So, 30, 45 minutes, an hour without a bite, that means you're not doing the right thing. So, first thing I'm gonna do is run new water. Second thing I'm gonna do is start slowing down. So, if I've been catching them on a chatterbait and I've been going through an area that I got a lot of confidence in. If I don't do it with a chatterbait and never had a bite, I'm gonna go back through it with something slower, you know, flipping around, casting around, casting a worm or something like that. But then if that doesn't work, and I know that I'm all out of options, and I've done, made a couple adjustments in the area that I thought was good, I'm gonna start running new water to try to fish the conditions. If you're on a clear water lake and the wind's blowing, I'm always gonna run that. You know, like, just try to run around and figure out where would they be today, what might they be doing today, and I'll just pull up and give it 15, 20 minutes. And a lot of times you'll pull up and get a bite in five minutes whenever you start, whenever you find the right thing. So I like to move around a ton throughout the day, jumping all over the place, here, there, here, there, here, there. It looks like I'm going absolutely crazy, but there's a method to it. And when you get a bite, you figure out exactly what the pattern is for that day that you can run. And a lot of times in just like two hours, you can run a pattern and catch eight or 10 fish and end up having a really nice bag. So, you know, you just gotta keep adjusting even when it's not working for the first half of the day, just make adjustments. Now you have more information of what's not working so you can figure out what is working. So it's just about staying positive, making adjustments, and changing up areas, locations, baits. You change everything. Okay, so this is a weird question. So if you, at 11 o'clock, aren't catching them, you start running new water and you start catching them mm -hmm. on day one. 
on day two, are you going to go back to your old stuff? Or no. are you going to, you're going to ditch all that stuff? Yep. Anything that was not working on day one, I'm going to pick up right where I left off on day two. So if I feel like something was working, if I got a pattern, I might start on new water that's in that pattern, or I might go back to the same places where I caught them on day one. And if the conditions change and something happens where I feel like they might be biting how they were in practice, I'll go back and check it, but I'm not going to give it half a day. I'm going to give it like 30 minutes. I'm going to pull up to the absolute best spot that I thought that I had when the conditions change and then try to catch them in that again. But for the most part, unless something changes, I am not going to go back to the stuff that I did not catch them on on day one for me. I'm going to pick up where I left off. What else? That's, that's it. All right, guys. That's a little talk about practice. Been thinking about it a lot. Been trying to figure out exactly what I want to do this year. Because practice is going to be very important for the tournament, but you know, you catch in practice does not matter. So I don't really value catching fish in practice that much, other than knowing that they're in a certain area. So that's my really, approach to it. Really, like practice for these elite events aren't just the three days of practice. Like it's actually a lot. Yes, I'm on I'm on yes, online rigging, rigging, yeah. Google Maps. Google Maps, yep. Looking around on my electronics, trying to find places that are that are unique or anything and trying to figure out how to run into a place, how to be more efficient on the water. We're going to some lakes this year that are very difficult to run around on. And you know, just knowing how to get to the place you're trying to get to as efficiently as possible saves you a ton of time. You know, so all that goes into it. So practice practice starts when that schedule comes out. That's when practice starts. Official practice starts three days before the event, but practice starts when that schedule comes out. Cause I've been gearing up for ordering baits from all my sponsors, ordering baits from Shop Carl's, ever since it has been released where we're going. So that's what we're working on. And we got tons of reels with no line that need line. And we got a lot with line. So we don't need that many more. We need a few more, a couple more. <laughs> 